In this video, we're going to begin discussing one of our final methods for binary search trees, that method being how do we delete nodes from the binary search tree. So suppose I wanted to delete three. This isn't too bad because three is over here all on its own, and the worst I'll have to do is actually find that node and then remove it. So three is not too big of an issue. What if I wanted to delete two instead? Two also isn't too big of an issue either, because if I delete it, that looks like it causes a problem, but I can just update three to now be connected to four instead. So that's not too bad. I see a pretty obvious way I could implement that as well. They may have to do some finagling with pointers to get that to work properly, but doable. Let's really try and ruin things though. What if we needed to delete 25? Oh no, catastrophic error point, right? We've deleted our root of our tree and we need to find something to put there to not break everything. If you th remember back to some of the things we've discussed, you might actually think, I know a value that will work to put there. One value would be 26. Why 26? Well, 26 is the successor of 25. So if I was to wire 26 up to instead point at the correct values for my left and right child for the root, that seems like it kind of works, but then I will need to move 31 there and I'll have to make sure to delete all of these connections and then maybe that works, right? That And then I'll maybe need to make this point up at nil because it's the root. So there's some things to do there, but maybe I can make that work, but I'm gonna have to be really cautious with pointers. In some of these instances, we're, going, we're trying to replace a node with another node. For example, here, I'm trying to replace 25 with 26. Or my first, one of my first examples, I was trying to replace two with three. So having that idea might help us. For one last example before we dive into the code too much, suppose I wanted to delete 22. This is a more sophisticated example of deleting our two over here. If I delete 22, then I would need to wire it up like this while keeping all of those children around for 15. So this idea of moving a cluster of nodes and transplanting it up, in practice, I would actually move these up there and this tree would look a little bit shorter as a result. We're going to need to understand how can I move a node from one place to another place. We're going to call this transplanting. We're going to take node U and replace it with node V. Let's look at the code for that with some pictures also associated with it. So to transplant, notice I have a bit of a typo in my version of this notes. Your, it should not be there in yours, but double check that I did update it properly. We have a node V here that has some children alpha and beta. Alpha and beta can be entire trees unto themselves. They could be like this example up here and be just a single node and a single node, or they could be an entire tree with many, 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 many children. Both of those are fine. And I have a node V, and what I want to do is move v, v into the location that U was while keeping V's children. So I need to find the, the what U's parent was, and then I need to update where the parent was pointing. So if U was on the left, V will now be on the left. If U was on the right, V will now be on the right. And then I need to also make sure V points upwards. So I need to make P point to V, V point to P. And by doing that, I've effectively removed you and all of its children from the tree because I can no longer get down to it from the root of the tree. So this is a clever trick to delete a node and replace it with another one without needing to really do much work. So it'll just be left dangling in memory. So with this in our head, let us try and figure out what, how we're gonna implement this. We had a couple of cases, so let's go back up and look at those. Our first case, if we have no children, we just delete the node. That's nice and easy. That was our case of deleting three. Nice and easy. If we have only one child, we replace with our child. That was our case here of deleting node 22. And then if we have two children, we replace the node with the successor and replace the successor with its right child. So I moved 26 to be the root and replaced 26 with its right child, 31. So those are my three cases. The code here will look messy because we need to make sure to get all of the pointers in the right places, but let's look at the code. 
The code for delete is here. Looking at the code, there's a couple of things we need to notice. What we have is that if the left child is nil, we can simply replace the node with its right child. This is that the number of children, number of children is less than or equal to one. Both of these cases are actually that instance. And because of the fact that replacing a node with a nil would count as just simply deleting it, these cover the case of less than or equal to one children. Now, if we look at this remaining code, it's trying to do what we did before, but it's managing all of the pointers. So step one is find that successor node. This was locate 26 in our problem. After we had found that, what we're going to do is replace the successor with its right child. This line here was our act of replacing 26 is replaced by 31 in our previous example. And then we need to do some fixing of pointers. What we're doing here is we're trying to assign the right value of the successor to be the value that was the node of, that we deleted. So what does that mean? This is our attaching of 26 to 38. I only need to do this if the node I'm replacing the deleted node with is not my immediate right child. So this is to guarantee I don't lose whatever information was directly to the right of the deleted node. So I need to connect that up. And anytime I'm doing a connection, I need to say what I'm connecting and then also assign the correct parentage so that the pointers point in both directions correctly. So this code here does two things. It attaches on the right, the whatever from whatever was deleted and it also promotes the right child of the successor to where the successor was. After having done that, I'm going to need to replace the node I'm deleting with its successor and then connect up all of the stuff on the left. So this is a bunch of finagling around with pointers and since I know you guys are mostly taking systems one, I know you guys all love pointers and dealing with all of the ways you need to connect them. Drawing out the picture can help here though. So this code down here is replacing 25 with 26. This code that I'll highlight in green is preserving the connection to the right. And the code I will highlight in blue preserves the connection to the left, both from the deleted node. We're taking whatever was on the right of the deleted and making sure it's attached and taking whatever was on the left of the deleted and making sure it was attached. So this method looks kind of intimidating, because of the way that we are doing these transplant and moving around these pointers, but it's really not too bad. What is the runtime? Well, first we probably want to understand the runtime of transplant. Let's look up at that code. Transplant is actually really easy. It's find a pointer, set a pointer, set a pointer, set a pointer, set a pointer, all constant time operations. So transplant is a convenient constant time function. It does some nice stuff for us. Now, in all of this top code, we're doing transplant, so that's constant time. Finding the minimum, that's a little awkward. Finding the minimum takes theta of h because we might need to descend the entire tree to find the minimum value. And after all of that, we're just doing a bunch of transplants. So all of this deletion stuff is going to be in theta of h because all we need to do is to find the minimum and then do a bunch of pointer rearranging to make sure we move all of the values around on the tree. This is one of the convenient things about pointers though, is I don't need to actually, you know, iterate over anything. I can just move the pointers around as long as I have the correct references to all of the values I need. When performing a deletion, we might also be storing some size information at the nodes. So let's figure out how we can fix that. Let's do it for the sort of worst case here where we had to delete 25. So when I delete 25, I need to make 26 point at 38. I need to make 26 point at four, and I need to make 31 point at 36. So let's delete all of these edges we don't care about, just so we don't confuse them. Maybe it might be better to actually write 26 up top to make our lives a little bit easier, but we will see what happens there. Notice, that when I do this sort of transplant 
for 26 going up to 25, it might be a smart idea to update the size of 26 to be the size of 25. We might not need to do that though, so let's try and see what we've broken. I actually haven't broken anything over here, which is convenient. All of that remains totally untouched. So if we look, 31 also isn't broken at all because I didn't add anything below it. But five, the size for 36 here is wrong. So I would have to update that size to be one less. So I would have to go up from 31. So I'd have to update this size to be one less down to six. And then I would have to update the size of its parent, which is awkwardly this 26 drawn there to be 10 plus six plus one, that's 17. And notice I only ever went up the tree with this awkward down diagonal thing happening because of the way I did my deletion and drew my pointers afterwards. But I only ever had to go upwards in the tree, which is kind of convenient. So let's look at this update size method as we scroll down. To update the size, while I still have places to go upwards, I am going to update the sizes and then go up. Exactly what I would expect. So this is going to be in theta of h, again, because we are always only ascending the tree, we are never going back down or ruining anything there. So this is going to be in theta of the height. How can we in incorporate this into the delete method? Here it is. I'm gonna perform this transplant. We will need to update the sizes uh, based on the parent because that is the node that has things below it having gotten deleted. In both of our first two cases, that's when we had one or less child. We just moved one node up and then we will have removed one node. So we have to remove a bunch of ones from the sizes. In our other cases, we started at the parent of the successor and worked our way up. So I'm gonna store what the parent of the successor was and update the size from there. Updating the size takes data of H and all of this does not affect our runtime. So we're still in data of H, even when updating the size.